My name is Nadia. I uh, drove for four hours today. I took two naps and I'm not home. I never made it home, so that's why I look like this. I assume you're here for some news, so let's let's get that to you. Yeah. Let's start off with something cool but a bit controversial. Canon released a video this week showcasing the sheer power of their 120 megapixel APS-H sensor. This is the same one they first mentioned back in 2010 briefly and then sort of forgot about until 2015 when they said they would be putting it uh, this in a DSLR and later in 2016 we actually got to see a prototype. Anyways, this week's video has nothing to do with that potential camera, actually. Instead, it's a comparison just how much more detail the 9.6 frames per second video this thing can capture over the last APS-H camera Canon has made. So essentially, Canon went... well, I'm, I'm gonna let Pablo tell you. He has an opinion. So essentially, Canon went, check out our latest cutting edge, not even close to consumer tech. Watch how much better it is than the camera we released nine years ago. Honestly, considering that's 2 megapixels 1080p video coming out of the 1D Mark IV at a high compression, I'm just gonna say it. This isn't even that impressive. Why not compare it to 8K video, or Sony's 100 megapixel sensor, or even your own DSR's 50 megapixel sensor, all of which are available for purchase today. And then, when the results are not that impressive, talk about the limitations on your lenses and how this is still quite impressive in its own technological right. But why would you compare it to a camera you don't even make anymore? Okay, well, how about the second bit of Canon news? They also announced this week their first full-frame mirrorless camera. It's the $33,000 C700 Mark II flagship cinema camera. It's the same body of the first generation C700, but comes with a slightly shorter and longer full-frame uh, 5.9K sensor. With this, Canon officially joins the competition as the trend of moving to larger formats continues for cinema cameras. Perhaps the best thing about this camera, like many of Canon's offerings, actually is the inclusion of dual pixel AF. This one is more advanced than what you're used to, even with things like like face tracking and even a sort of dual pixel powered focus peaking. Aside from that, the camera isn't too special like most of Canon's offerings. Without this $7,000 external codex recorder, for example, you can only do 4K DCI at 29.97p in ProRes 422HQ. With the recorder, however, you can do up to 5.9K at 60p in 10-bit RAW. As with most of the recent Canon releases, it'll be interesting to see just how this does on the market. Options for upgrading your current C700 will also be announced at some point. Oh, and they also announced a new 20mm T1.5 Cineprime lens and a 17 and 24 inch professional HDR reference monitors. And now some updates from past rumors. Lytro will not be acquired by Google. Not officially, anyways. Instead, they announced that they will officially be shutting down. In an official, everything's official, <laughs> statement, they mentioned that it's been an honor to contribute to the cinema and virtual reality communities. There is no mention of Google or the rumored deal. However, there is a report from The Verge that says many of Lytro employees are moving over to Google or Alphabet, rather. No statement from them either, but it seems that maybe a hiring deal was reached. As far as the brand or their projects go, uh, this might be the last we hear of them. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> In the hopes of not becoming the next Lytro this week, uh, uh, GoPro, officially more official stuff, announced the Hero, their affordable action camera for the masses. No surprises here. It was leaked last week. Although it was speculated that this was a 1080 camera, it's actually packing a 10 megapixel sensor that can shoot up to 1440p video at 60 frames per second, which is... It's better. It also comes with all the other features that set GoPro apart, like 30 meter waterproofness without a case and voice control. GoPro says their new camera is easy to use, as uh, easy as using your phone. Though they really uh, hope you don't realize that. Get it? Because then you would just use your phone and not buy the camera. Oh. Because then you would just use your phone. Speaking of which, if you just got the S9 Plus for the best smartphone camera in the world, well, too bad. It's just been dethroned. The new king? Huawei's P20 Pro. As many rumors suggest, it has a triple camera setup on the back, co-developed by Leica. 
The configuration is as follows. From top to bottom, we have an 80 millimeter equivalent, eight megapixel camera, followed by a 40 megapixel, 27 millimeter equivalent, and lastly, a 20 megapixel monochromatic 27 millimeter camera. The main camera, the 40 megapixel one, is 20% bigger than the Galaxy's and has a max ISO of 10,000, no, 102400? 10, 102,400. And actually samples down pictures to just 10 megapixels, which is probably ideal. There's a lot of computational photo tech involved with this camera from long exposure averaging to 5x hybrid zoom. I think I'll just leave you with a quote from DxO Mark. Uh, we are used to every new smartphone camera generation being slightly better than the previous one, but looking at the images and test results from the P20 Pro, it seems Huawei has skipped one or two generations. The results are simply that good. The P20 Pro's triple camera setup is the biggest innovation we have seen in mobile imaging for quite some time and is a real game changer. Too bad the US intelligence agencies told us not to trust Huawei. Here's one giant Canon commercial that'll uh, make you think twice about throwing away that tacky strap uh, as soon as you open the box, because that's what we did. <laughs> an 11 year old boy found an object covered in barnacles while his class was working on cleaning up a beach in Northern Taiwan. His teacher, Park Lee, came to investigate and uh, found a Canon G12 inside the barnacle ridden waterproof case. As you can see, the camera itself was unharmed and even had a charge after two years of being out at sea. Lee then investigated the contents of the camera and posted the pictures to Facebook to try and locate the owner. After the post went viral, the owner was discovered as Serena Tsubakihara. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, a student at the Sofia University in Tokyo who went scuba diving in uh, Ishigaki in September of 2015 when she dropped her camera. In the ocean while scuba diving. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, the most unbelievable part of that story to me is that the that little cannon uh, still had a charge. Really? Mine doesn't last through the day. Two years. Yeah. And in the sea, ocean, you water. I don't think it's a can commercial. I want to know what brand the, the casing was. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. Yeah. On to another quirky act of nature. This owl. Wait. Is that Hedwig? He's doing weddings now? Man, last time I saw Hedwig, uh, he was being chased by Death Eaters. How'd that work out, buddy? Is that too soon? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we all know the basic wedding ceremony, and we wonder how ours may be unique or stand out and be better than our friends. <clears throat> and this couple had the idea to have an owl as their ring bearer, flying over the guests to one of the best men when the moment came. Which is pretty cool. Anyway, it seems that Hedwig uh, was a little cranky being up and working during the daylight hours. Wedding photographer Stacy Oliver captured this moment when the bird attacked the other best man in the wedding. Now I say attacked since the owl was really just doing what it was trained to do. The first best man standing at the altar with the couple outstretched his hand as a signal for the bird to come to him, which it did. Then the second best man who was seated in the front row also outstretched his hand, like pointing, gesturing towards the bird. Uh, and as you can see in the video of the incident, um, the bird took this as like a second command flying towards the second best man who was, of course, afraid of birds. And well, the picture says it all. And then, you know, the wedding went on and happily ever after, yada, yada, yada. News nuggets! <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some milk with your nuggets? <laughs> Ew. <laughs> uh, Nissi, Nisi, N-I-S-I, -I, whatever, however you say that, has a new smartphone accessory that lets you clip this uh, square filter holder. They have a polarizer and graduated ND ones. <laughs> ND, that's me. Also, as far as I can tell, it does not work on dual camera setups. <laughs> Bubbles' mind was blown. <laughs> Torque, I mean, moment, nerd, also <laughs> unveiled smartphone accessories for cinematic video. In their lineup um, is included an anamorphic lens, iPhone X battery photo case, a gimbal counterweight, and filter mount. Should I do that again? I can. Has released a bunch of new products uh, ahead of NAB. Mostly lights and a cage for Sony's. Just keep them confined. If you want to see the complete list, link's in the description.
The Kipon Canon EF to Fuji X and GFX autofocus adapters with focal reducer options are now available for pre-order. <laughs> Syrup. Syrup? has announced the Genie 2 motion control system. It's smaller and more versatile than the original. And $2,500 for the three axis option. And finally, if you look at the uh, NAB show map, uh, you will see that Sony has the biggest booth in the whole floor. Yo girl, what you hiding in there? What was in there? What you hiding? All right, that's all the news we have for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like watching, watching. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Make sure to like this video if you liked it. And links to everything we talked about down below. Uh, yeah. All right, I'm gonna go take another nap. Maybe, maybe subscribe. Oh, make sure to subscribe if you're not for news and other techie stuff. And can you still see me? So I'm gonna go eat something and I'll see you later. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye.